Welcome. Welcome to Fridays at One, a community outreach program of the New School Institute for Retires and Retired Professionals. IRP has served as a model of retirement learning for over 400 other programs. There are new, now 400 people who claim their roots as being in the IRP. Uh, there are no, IRP, I'm sorry, IRP is unique in its commitment to learning in retirement and to peer learning. We would love you to come visit with us to see our students and to see what the peer learning operation is. And if you haven't left uh, your information with us, please get on our mailing list and we will invite you to an April 11th meeting. I'm going to turn the floor over to Ken Whitty, a student in the IRP program who co-chairs these Friday sessions. Ken. Can everyone hear me, first of all? Okay, so I'm Ken Whitty. I'm the co-chairman of the Fridays at, at One series. And um, we're about to see a, a wonderful historical documentary about women in jazz from the 1930s to the present day. The film was produced and directed by Judy Chaikin and features a group of talented instrumentalists, most of whom you've never heard of. And we're honored by the presence of one of these great jazz artists who is in the film, Sherry Maracle. So. And after the film, we'll hear from Sherry. She's a jazz drummer and leader of the Diva Jazz Orchestra. We'll talk about women in jazz today and answer your questions. But first, the girls in the band. So we're very fortunate today to have Sherry Maracle with us. Sherry is a world-renowned jazz drummer, leads the Diva Jazz Orchestra. Five play her quintet and the Diva Jazz Trio, and she's a published composer and arranger, and is the music director of Tappin' Through Life with Maurice Hines, that's playing right now at the New World uh, Stages on West 50th Street. And um, last night, my, my wife and I, we saw the show, and Sherry's Diva Orchestra is spectacular. And the show ends this Sunday, so I urge all of you to run out, get tickets this weekend. It's a love fest of jazz and tap, and tap dancing, and not to be missed. And welcome, Sherry Maracle. Hi, everybody. So glad to be here with all of you. I'm happy you enjoyed the film. It's always, uh, I, I have to compose myself. It's always really emotional for me to see that because so many people are gone. Wait, I'll pull it together. Okay, I'm together. No, it's, it's a really, uh, when I see that, Marion McPartland has left us and Billy Rogers, the great trumpet player. and Viola Smith, the drummer, is 102 years old. I talked to her last month. She's still doing great, as uh, ornery as ever. Uh, and Roz Crone, the woman that talked a lot about touring the South, is, is still with us also. But when, you, when every time I see this, and I've seen it over the, over the years quite a few times, and it's all, at the end of it, I'm always like biting my lip, because it's uh, such a labor of love for Judy, the filmmaker, and then just to see this included in the history of, um, of music and jazz, especially jazz history, it was, it's a really important part that was left out for so long. And as a lot of the women you heard say, uh, I didn't know about this player, I didn't know about that player. That was a, in my experience when I started playing drums, when I saw Buddy Rich when I was 11 years old in the 70s and I didn't have any fem female role models either. And I'll share with you the first time I, I was, a, my group was playing at the International Brass Conference and they did a tribute to Clora Bryant. And when I saw Clora's documentary, I sobbed. I was like, how could I not know about this woman who is like Dizzy Gillespie and Louis Armstrong and Lee Morgan all combined into one package and sang and danced and to wear that dress like that and those heels and play trumpet like that? It was just, I was astounded and then started to pay, pay a lot more attention to those, those kind of 
issues. And as I don't know if you remember me saying, but when I started playing and a lot of women in my generation, uh, as you heard, almost every woman said, we never think of ourselves as women in jazz. It's just everybody else who likes the woman part <laughs> more than us. We were just in jazz. So um, I never in my career wanted or thought about being involved in all women projects. And in fact, when I moved to New York in 85, there were some groups working and it was very similar to what you heard the woman from, women from the 1940s saying that they were put in these crazy costumes and you know, you have to wear this, you have to wear, I mean, horn players never wear lipstick. It's insane. Wear tons of lipstick, wear this, wear a skirt. And I was, you know, never interested in that because the music was the last thing on anybody's mind in many of those cases. And um, it's, it's at the older I get, and, and Diva started in 1992. We were put together by a wonderful empresario and drummer named Stanley Kay, who used to manage the Buddy Rich Band, and subsequently Heinz Heinz and Dad, and a, a lot of other great acts in show business. And when I, when I um, met him and he wanted to put together this group, I was, he said to me, do you know other women that play like you? And knowing him and his reputation, I thought it was a great opportunity to put together all the women I knew just in New York City alone that were being marginalized and not being given opportunities to play in, in all the big bands that were still in existence. Now there's a lot smaller feel of that, actually, than there used to be. And um, I, I, I said yes to Stanley, and uh, he started the Diva Jazz Orchestra. And we've been going strong and touring the world and doing a, amazing musical things since then. And I'll tell you guys, the older I get, the more I am dedicating um, a lot more of my time and effort to be more of a advocate and activist for, for this, for this, still make getting women uh, on an even playing field. You know, most of society, it's not as you all continually hear the studies about women get 79 cents per dollar to our male counterparts. Amplify that about a thousand times in the world of jazz. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's still happening. So the older I get, the more I'm going to be dedicated to that cause. And I, and I am. So would you, I'd like to uh, answer some questions if anybody has any about the film or women in jazz or have any stories that you'd like to hear? Any questions? Hi. Um, this was just astounding. Um, and amongst all the greats we had the pri privilege of hearing, the playing that really made my hair stand on end was Melba Liston. Yes. And did you know her? I did not know her. No, unfortunately. A lot of my friends did and had, and she was one of the few women that played in um, one of the premier bands. It's now called the Vanguard Jazz Orchestra. It used to be called the Thad Jones and Mel Lewis Orchestra. And they just started their uh, celebrating their 50th year of playing every Monday at the Village Vanguard. And Melba was in that band. So Thad Jones and Mel Lewis were one of the few people to give w women like Woody Herman did, women uh, the opportunity to jam in the band, so to speak. But yeah, she was, re she was remarkable and very, very glossed over in history. Judy's, Judy's passion for this, we met in about uh, 2003 at Starbucks on 23rd Street and 3rd Avenue, <laughs> and she called me up um, and said, oh, I have an idea for this film, and I've been thinking about this and getting footage together and everything, and we started chatting, and I Im immediately wanted to help her. I thought, that's, uh, that's an amazing idea. And she's, she's a, uh, has worked in film her whole life and does a lot of um, archival, uh, you know, uh, refurbishes old old film footage and things. And like, so I, I know her research was impeccable in this. And she's, I was telling Ken that she has, it could easily do like a multi-part Ken Burns PBS special. And you guys just got to see a fraction of what she's created. But one of the, I was in California playing at a jazz festival and she lives in Los Angeles and met her for lunch. And she said, we were just ca so casually talking about the film. And then we started talking about the documentary, A Great Day in Harlem which was revolved around that photograph. And Judy said, wouldn't it be fun if we redid that photograph with women from the film? Boing, <laughs> big light bulb. And, uh, and so uh, 50, almost 50 years to the date is when we, we shot that from the original, 50 years. So the original was uh, 57 men, and there's actually three women in it. There's a vocalist in it too, but we had uh, the opposite. As many women as wanted to come, but we let three men in the picture. <laughs> Billy Taylor. The founder of Diva, Stanley Kay, and uh, this great bass player that's a big advocate for all of us named Bob Cranshaw. And New York City, believe it or not, they did not charge a dime. They gave us all the security. That's the original brownstone where the first one was shot. And it was just, it was an amazing experience. And when Marion McPartland pulled up, if you could have heard all, the, all, all of us just screamed our lungs out. She's such an icon. If you're not familiar with her and her great NPR series, Piano Jazz, she was one of the most magnificent women 
in music, in, in music, period. Great. So that was the story of that. I think that was a fabulous way to end the film. There's a lady back there. so much for bringing it to my attention. I mean, I knew some of the names there, but Sarah Vaughan, you know, some of them. But you introduced us to, to names I didn't know, and bless you, thank you. That's well, all. Oh, th thank you, and what, oh, that, I'm glad. I mean, I feel the same way when I saw it. <laughs> but Judy really made it clear that she wanted it to be women instrumentalists, because we all know a lot of the great jazz vocalists, of course, Ella Fitzgerald and Sarah Vaughan and Carmen McRae and on and on and on. And uh, it was a little stretch to even put, I mean, Esperanza Spalding is, is a vocalist and bass player, and Diana Krall, you know, is a vocalist, but Esperanza won uh, a few years ago, she won the, this is amazing too, at the Grammy Awards, she won Best New Artist of the Year, beating out Justin Bieber. <laughs> a, an African-American woman jazz bass player. <laughs> That's amazing, that was amazing. So she has a well-deserved well spot in that. For sure, but uh, but um, there's a lot more too, a lot more. And uh, the website, the girls in the band website's really remarkable too. If you want to take a visit and tell Judy what you think, I'm going to call her and tell her that uh, um, this was wonderful and nice to be able to talk to all of you. Uh, 2009, it started debuting, or 2010, it, it started internationally. It was started at the Dubai Film Festival. And it's done, been all the f um, film festival circuit for a number of years, and uh, we did it uh, at Lincoln Center. There was a theatrical release there, and it's still it's still going strong. Yeah, yeah, and I still have. A, I think it would be it's amazing still, and hopefully Judy and I will be able to pull it together to do a, a screening and like in the old days of the Paramount Theater, have the movie and then actually have the screen move up, and there's a big band, all women. You know, maybe maybe we'll get a chance to do that. I hope. Just when I saw I saw Buddy Rich when I was 11, and I looked at it, and my, I grew up my in a country and western household. Unless my mom lives in Irish folk music, and I never heard jazz before. And a teacher took me that I was in the school band. I wanted to play trumpet, and my teacher told me girls couldn't play the trumpet, so I was saddled with a metal clarinet, which I didn't like, and I kept switching different instruments. And finally, I saw the drums, and I I, I really raced home and I told my mom I was going to be a drummer and I love big band and I didn't know what it was or what I didn't understand Buddy Rich but I, that's all I ever wanted to do like like probably every single woman I can almost certainly say that's exactly what happened to them you you know you don't you don't wake up and say hmm let me think of my career options <laughs> oh jazz drummer that's a great one <laughs> oh thank you Thank you. Thank you. Jackie. Thank you. Well, I hope you all can come. I'm sure um, we're, we're uh, ending our nine, nine weeks there. We have uh, four, more, four more shows left. I think it's still like Broadway week winter discounts, <laughs> if anybody wants to come. It's at uh, New World Stages. It's 340 West 50th Street. And it's the story of Maurice Hines and Gregory Hines and their life in show business. It's, if you think lost, like if you think Rat Pack Las Vegas, when entertainers were incredible on stage, real live performers with live music. It's just, I, I, the band, and we're just like out of our minds just playing with Maurice every night. And these young tap dancers, including Maurice, are just out of this world. It's, it's really, it's, if that's the kind of entertainment you like, it's, it's, you know, I think you'll really enjoy it. I, when I saw the first time I saw Frank Sinatra in, in Las Vegas, I cried like a lunatic. It was so great. I had never seen anything like that. So, I, and Maurice is one of, one of the very, very few performers left that can do that, and it's it's amazing. And I'm 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 sad for uh, the entertainment industry that there's there's no people following in that that path any longer with with great big bands and just just pure joy of performance. So please come, and if you do stay till the end, and come up to the stage, and I'll bring you backstage to meet Maurice. <laughs> yes. Well, two, two thoughts. Uh, uh, when I realized I was going to see something on women's bands, uh, it took me about uh, six or eight hours today 
to come up with the name uh, Phil Spitalny. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, during World War II, uh, he was the only uh, w uh, women's ba band leader that I, that I ever heard of. Of course, I was a kid, and maybe there were a lot of others. It's just that I was particularly ignorant. The other thing that's like an analogous to this, but much, much better known, at least to me, maybe because I'm a man, is the uh, black experience in baseball. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, other sports had uh, black athletes, too, but baseball was big, always. Uh, football, N NFL football was not. Hockey was white. Basketball was college. So I think the only analogy would be uh, baseball to this. And let me close by just saying I really loved uh, the film. Thank you. Thank you. You know, our, our founder, Stanley Kay, was uh, the entertainment director for the New York Yankees. And what that means a lot of different things. But we actually have a show that was, it's called uh, Jazz Meets Baseball. And it's a lot of parallels of what you said. Again, it comes with a lot of film footage in it and uh, paralleling certain songs and experiences, similar to uh, the league of the league of their own. You'd say, and I know there was the uh, uh, black baseball league and women's baseball league, and it's 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 interesting how these things work themselves out. <laughs> One final question. Thank you, thank you, and. Uh, we are, uh, I mean, please visit, visit um, divajazz.com. Usually in New York, if we're not on the road, we play at uh, Dizzy's at Jazz at Lincoln Center uh, a few times a year, and hopefully we'll get a chance to see you all again. I'm glad you liked the film. Thank you. Sure thing. Listen, before you go, remember, March 4th is the next Fridays at 1, and Andrew Wilner will be here. It's about protecting the Hudson, the Hudson Estuary, and... Um, he was the former baykeeper. So March 4th, 1 o'clock. Let's meet here again. <laughs> <laughs>